Life in suburbia really is the peachiest, isn't it? Something weird happens to you when you move to suburbia. You stop forgetting what it's like to have actual problems and become obsessed with, say, whether your neighbor's lawn looks sufficiently green. When you live in the city, you may have first world problems, but at least they're actual real ones. Like, your hulking, grimly unsmiling neighbor blares mariachi music into your window 20 hours a day. Like, the guy upstairs is running an unpermitted bowling alley that only starts operating after midnight and seems to include unlimited shots of tequila, and you're not invited. Like, the lady who takes her vicious German shepherds with her everywhere she goes keeps taking your assigned parking place. Like, you don't have an assigned parking place, so you have to drive around for 2.7 hours a night to find somewhere to leave your car. Like, and this actually used to happen to me, a guy across the street gets drunk once a week and starts singing love songs to the entire neighborhood at the top of his lungs at 2 a.m. a few feet away from your window until one of, theirs, uh, one of his relatives wakes up and finally hauls him back into the house. This is not conducive to restful sleep. Like, and this also actually happened to me, there's a fatal gang shooting 30 feet from your house and the cops keep you awake all night long with their investigation. After which you decide that yes, maybe you do actually have to move to a suburban part of town. I used to be a cop reporter, so I was a little more nonchalant than I should have been about these things happening in my downtown neighborhood. Decades of running with my notebook to crime scenes and scary places had hardened me to bad things that happened. I was willing to put up with them in order to live in my cool 100 year old shingle bungalow with a big front porch. Then, one day, I was sitting in said porch with my little kids and they perked up and one remarked, Mommy, that was gunshots, huh? In fact, it was maybe five or six gunshots. We didn't even bother to go indoors. Nah, I told the kids, that was just a car backfiring. But they knew better, and so did I. I began contemplating whether I wanted to live in a neighborhood where my children could identify gunshots. A day or so later, someone down the street was shot in the leg in daylight, in the middle of the street. Well, it was only in the leg I rationalized to myself. Still, the incident began to prey on me. When the fatal shooting occurred right across the street, I finally decided I have had enough. It was time to buy the ugly fixer-up tract house I couldn't afford. In the neighborhood where I once thought everyone must have a lobotomy, because why else would, you, why, why else would they want to live there? where the most interesting feature were the grocery stores and the plethora of aging churches, where everyone has a big green lawn. Seriously, I really couldn't afford this house, and I still can't, because this is decidedly a two-income neighborhood, and I only have one. But I was bewitched by the fact that my kids could walk to excellent schools all the way through high school. No more hideous morning carpools. And suddenly, those shopping centers that I used to snub became the center of my existence when I had to run to the store for milk or pick up a prescription. I also discovered a new breed of people, the suburbanites. People who don't work and peer out their window all day long, keeping an eye out on the street. People who look askance at your old car, wondering when you're going to sell it because it's bringing down their home values. People who glare at you if you don't bring your trash cans in from the curb immediately when you've been chasing around your little kids all night long. People who get downright crabby if one of your visitors dares to park in front of her house, even though you point out that it's a public thoroughfare and that she still has plenty of room to park. Lately, now that my kids are all grown up, I've been contemplating moving back into the city and buying myself a little condo, some place where I can walk everywhere. But would I miss the peace and quiet and the streets and the street trees and the parking? I'm still working on that one.